Hello everybody. So I am doing my presentation on Marlene Dumas. So first we are going to talk a little bit about Dumas herself. She was born in Cape Town, South Africa on August 3rd, 1953. Most of Marlene's childhood was spent on the outskirts of the Kuhls River. Not sure if I said that right, but it is K-U-I-L-S. Both of her parents were average workers, her mom being a homemaker while her father ran a vineyard that was family owned since 1916. Marlene has always shown some kind of interest in art, leading to her attendance in the English-speaking Michaelis School of Fine Arts between 1972 and 1975. Along with her study in the arts, she also studied ethics, philosophy, and theory. Her earlier works were a variety of texts, collages, drawings, and watercolor, while her focus now is more on oil on canvas and ink on paper. So next, we're going to be talking about some styles and themes. Marlene's style has been said to mostly surround portraits, but in reality, that's not necessarily the case. Rather than these portraits representing an actual person, they tend to represent a certain emotion or a certain state of mind. Marlene's themes tend to go along with race and sexuality, guilt and innocence, and violence and tenderness. So our first image here is Evil is Banal. This painting was created in 1984 and was made from oil on canvas. This painting is Marlene Dumas herself looking over her, I'm sorry, looking over her shoulder out into the distance. I think that the color in this image is absolutely outstanding, um, especially with her long fiery orange hair. Her chin rests on her hand as if she's looking off into the distance away from the painting itself. Most of the value in this image is represented in Marlene's dark clothes um, around here and a little bit from the underside of her fiery hair. The title Evil is Banal is in reference to a controversial report on Nazis and the normality of evil. So you could definitely say that the bright colors and lines are direct opposites of the meaning of this painting. In the mid-1980s, Dumas joined a number of other South African artists to discuss different ideas, such as political, social, and cultural critique and resistance. While researching Marlene, I also discovered that for a white woman in South Africa, using a self-portrait this way can be considered um, as a very strong political statement. And I actually have a comment from Marlene Dumas herself. She says, I have not come to propagate freedom. I have come to show the disease symptoms of my time. I am a good example of everything that is wrong with my time. Our next image is called The Painter. This image was created in 1994 um, with oil on canvas. This image shows a young girl presented over six feet tall. She is clearly naked with a strange and kind of eerie look on her face. Along with this eerie look, um, her skin is also almost translucent, like you can see the back of this painting. The little girl's face is extremely pale, which to me gives the impression of lack or zero life. Her expression also seems lifeless and angry. The center of the young girl's body is blue, which to me emphasizes the sense of feeling cold from the inside of the body to the outside of the body. Each hand is a different color. Um, one is red and one is blue. I think that because of this little girl's um, creepy vibe that she has going on, most people would probably correlate her red hand with blood, um, but that is to be interpreted in your own personal views. Her feet are lightly sketched and incomplete, almost as if she's not really standing on the ground. This little girl has sometimes been described as an evil force of destruction. However, this portrait is actually based on Dumas' own daughter, Helena, who happened to be finger painting on a summer day. Um, the eerie and somewhat angry expression comes from the child's impatience with the photographer wanting to continue finger painting. 
I think that this portrait definitely goes along with Dumas's themes of violence, but also a sense of innocence. Dumas's daughter Helena um, also later commented on this portrait and says that she thinks that this is one of the best paintings that her mother has ever created. So our next image is called Dorothy D. Light. This piece was created in 1998, including ink wash, watercolor, and metallic acrylic on paper. This image depicts a naked woman bending over, exposing her genitals as if she is just offering it away. Her stance seems to be inviting, but her face seems to be pushing the viewer away as well. This image discusses a topic that is so prevalent in our society, which is social norms and sexual taboos. I think that Dorothy D. Light definitely goes along with Dumas's theme of sexuality. This work is a part of the M.D. Light series, which was based on personal snapshots of prostitutes that resided in the famous red light district of Amsterdam. Dumas literally took some of these prostitutes into her studio and took Polaroids of them. There are many images that are represented in the same physical position and the same idea, but this piece is definitely one of the most highly appreciated images. This piece can be connected to my last presentation on Egon Schiele, who also created some erotic works involving women. So the last image that I will be talking about is called Wall Weeping. This piece was created in 2009 using oil on linen. This piece was originally exhibited in the exhibition Against the Wall at the David Zwerner Gallery um, that is located in New York. This image directly relates on Dumas' theme of Israel-Palestinian conflict. The men portrayed in this image are standing against the wall with their arms um, raised above their heads. This piece was created to portray Israeli soldiers searching Palestinian men in front of a very large wall. This image could also be seen as Israeli men raising their arms in prayer in front of the Wailing Wall, which I would hope that most of you would know what that is, but if you don't, it is the most sacred holy site in the entire city of Jerusalem. There's a lot of value portrayed in this image, um, mostly encompassing the men's pants and t-shirts. This image shows universal suffering rather than just individual conflict or individual war. Dumas also uses this image to show the power of manipulation towards the press and the media, um, especially during conflict. And personally, I think that you could directly relate this image to some of the things that are going on in um, our society today with everything that's going on with um, Black Lives Matter and different cl conflict that's happening. She wants to um, explain how powerful manipulation is towards the press and the media, especially during some kind of conflict like this. And here is my Works Cited page. Thank you guys so much.